do the Dolphins make the jump from playoff contenders to Super Bowl contenders? Well, the defense was rolling last year. The thing now is the offense has to come to play. Starting off with that offensive line and being able to run the ball. Mm. Once they're able to do that, like you said, they brought Armstead in. They brought in Connor Williams. They brought in a lot of guys to get that done. And then second, big plays, big plays. Plays mm -hmm. Tua getting the ball to Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, more starts in the backfield. Two of the fastest guys with the ball in their hands in the NFL the last few years. All right, so they they bring in Jerry Rice and Calvin Johnson <laughs> and Tony Dorsett. <laughs> Can Tua play? Let's just get this to the table right now, Jason. To start to start the week, are you a Tua guy? Are you fired up? You were with him all last year. Are you a Tua guy? You know better than us. I'm fired up for Tua. You give him weapons. He has that Hawaiian mindset. Hang loose. The moment. It doesn't get too big. He's been at Alabama. He's won championship. He knows what it takes. He now has the weapons around him. Two is gonna make it happen. Gotta push back because your first thing is if you give him the weapons. You don't say that with Josh Allen. You don't say that with Mahomes. You don't say mm -hmm. if you give him the weapons. Like it's two of the guys. He going up against Mahomes and going up against Mac Jones and saying. I'm taking this team down the field. Let's win a game. But that's what they did with those guys. When you got them at homes, you bring them in. You let them sit behind Alex Smith. You allow – you get to Tyree uh, Hills. You get to mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. You build the weapons around them. Look how long it's taken Jared Allen with them going to get a guy like Stephon Diggs. Look how much that changed that offense and just him and his development as a quarterback. You have to build around these quarterbacks. You just can't mm -hmm. draft them in the top ten on bad teams and expect them to go out there and win. Especially when Herbert looks pretty good. We can do – we can redraft that all day long. I just feel so good to talk Dolphins. It feels like we're all... <laughs> I don't know if you know this. If you haven't watched in a while. We changed the name to GMFD for Good Morning Football Dolphins. That's what we do. We talk <laughs> Dolphins. We're here at NFL Films. I don't know if you guys know this. They have, uh, they're evacuating all the film of the 85 Bears and the 78 Steelers to get ready for the 2022 we Dolphins. We talk a lot of Dolphins. We talk a lot of Dolphins. And I feel like, a, like I'm Gollum getting the ring back talking <laughs> Dolphins. And it always comes to... Um, Tua, McDaniel, back and forth, back and forth. So part of Talking Dolphins, um, the stupidest Dolphins topic, and that includes one time when we said, have the Patriots done enough to keep up with the Dolphins this year? The <laughs> stupidest one is the Tua Armstrong. <laughs> it really is. Like, we have exhausted this, and it's not just us, it's everybody. Can he throw deep? Is uh, Tyreek going to run a nine route and get underthrown by 30 yards? Ridiculous. Why well, did the digging? And since we are at NFL Films, I wanted to go historic. 1997, guys, this is a really fun video. You're going to see the boys, and by the boys, I mean Aikman and Favre and Young. And watch what happens after Favre goes. Watch what happens with Young, and th think about this as it pertains to Tua. Roll this. Fred has always had a little problem of keeping the ball in between the lines. He's thrown them out of bounds the last couple years. But there's no doubt he's got the most arm of anybody here. He's over to the 70-yard mark. Where's, where's 74 up? for Favre. <laughs> into the wind. 74 <laughs> into the wind. Good. This is really, you know, maybe an understatement to say this is not his strong event here. He's always struggled in it. See if you can get it 50, Steve. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Short of 60. Or maybe he just did clear 60. Wow, he's happy. Might have set a personal record for Steve I there. You see the chop busting going on about Steve Young's arm strength. Sims is killing him. Aikman's killing him. If I'm Tua Tagovailoa, I have a Steve Young poster in my house, in my gym, everywhere I want to put him. Steve Young, another guy, by the way, who didn't exactly light up the league when he entered it. Didn't come directly to the NFL, USFL, in Tampa. It was a disaster, and he figured it out. He throws it 59 yards. Brett Favre throws it about 96. Just remember this when you're going through the fifth round of your takes about how Tua doesn't have the arm strength. Steve Young, not a cannon of an arm. Hall of Famer, one of the best I've ever seen. Peter, he needs a giant Steve Young poster. Niners, maybe 94 round there. I think that's what Tua needs. You think Tua would sign up for Steve Young's career? I think he would. I think he yeah. would. I think, I think it would. would be though. okay. Um, I I look at the coach, Mike McDaniel. You go from Brian Flores, defensive head coach, with multiple coordinators over his first few seasons for Tua to now having Mike McDaniel, who was in Jimmy Garoppolo's ear, but helped build that San Francisco offense last year. And what did they do this offseason? Well, yeah, they got stronger and better up front, and they did bring in a talented offensive lineman, but they also got even faster. Obviously, Tyreek Hill is the, 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 the headline, but... I mean, do you see what Raheem Mostert does? He's always, annually, whenever Amazon breaks out that next gen yeah, stat. Yeah, he's like he's the fastest. The fastest player. Yeah. Chase Edmonds. I spoke with Cliff Kingsbury at, uh, <laughs> at, at, at McVay's wedding, and I'm like, 
man, you guys are loaded. And he's like, we lost Chase. He's a really good player. Like, Chase Edmonds is really fast and really good. And Jalen Waddell had the most catches ever by a rookie in his season. And it's even mean disgust. So I, <laughs> an identity, fast, fast, fast. I think if they establish that, this team is going to be a pain in the butt to play mm -hmm. on Sundays. Okay, so here's the thing, and I'm going to probably get in trouble. I'll get kicked off this show. In about I like it already. Uh -oh. um, so you look at the super that's on the screen. How can the Dolphins make the jump to Super Bowl contenders? Yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, whoa, am I missing something here? What, why don't we just start with the playoffs? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I know that that's what you do on Morning Talk Show. Yes. I mean, you, you make the leap, right? <laughs> sure. it's, on the show, you make the leap. You guys have been talking about the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. To Super Bowl contenders like again and I, and I understand some of the hype is because clearly how they finished last year right they 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 struggled early they look at this team at the end of the year like this is a team that's going to make a run but again like look at their division mm -hmm. look at the AFC mm -hmm. and now we're just we're we're going right to like hey Jason like and it's my I mean I asked the question but I mean <laughs> we, but like we're making leap to Super Bowl contenders and then we go back to Tua and I know you guys ha have talked about him all previous last season and yeah. why should we believe in him and I guess there's sort of this this idea of like if you have to continually say give us why we should believe in him and, and give us why we should think that this is the guy I mean how long do you say that where it makes you question like is that the guy if you have to continually mm -hmm. ask that and then you look at you know some of the numbers of, of what he's done against the Bills and the Chiefs and these are the guys that he's going to have to contend with so again it's not just two it's the whole team but this this two idea like he's he has to be the guy right for them to we're going to even be talking playoffs, and we're making the jump to Super Bowl contenders. But again, when you look at the Bills and the Chiefs, he's 0-4 against those guys. He's struggled against those guys. Those teams are incredible. And then there's the deep ball thing. You get Tyreek Hill. Well, he's going to solve all the problems. I don't, I mean, here's some of the numbers we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I, look, Tyreek Hill is incredible. We all know what he can do. Tua's got to put it in his hand. Tua's got to help him out there. But it's just I feel like we're taking like a jump from like – Step one of like this sure. is a great way to end the season to Super Bowl contenders. Yeah. And to me, like that's just a little like cart before cart way before yeah, yeah, the horse like, on yeah. that one. Yeah, well, listen, the, the, as it pertains to the division, the Dolphins have a Bills problem, and we've talked yeah. about that. You've seen even Jay, some of the teams you would played for. For years, Cleveland couldn't beat Roethlisberger, and Buffalo couldn't beat Brady. Like, Miami has to take care of the Bills thing because they don't just lose; they get their doors blown off. And the question keeps coming up. We've repurposed it six times in this segment. <laughs> Is Tua the guy who's going to go to Buffalo and be like, I got this, Josh Allen. If you put up 35, I'm going to put up 38. We just haven't seen it. We haven't seen it yet. And that's the thing. In that division, everybody has a Buffalo problem. We washed away. That's true. We washed away <laughs> Buffalo dismantled <laughs> New England in that playoff game. And New England has been the prized possession of the division forever since I can remember. So I think that's an issue that everybody has. But – you got to speak it into existence. Why talk about the playoffs when the trophy is the ultimate goal? So that's why we're talking about Miami Super Bowl contenders. Okay.